Hi, this is Danielle with Cookie.com, back to dig deeper into the scroll effects widget. In the scroll effects basics video, I touched on the top features of the widget, but today I'm going to be unloading it into detail. So stay tuned in this video as I dig deeper into the widget and recreate this effect in Muse. Heading back into Muse, let's get started. For this effect, we're going to be needing a goodbye and an object like a rectangle to hide the goodbye until I'm ready for it to be revealed. Hello and goodbye will have to stay in place for the entirety of the page while the rectangle should layer over the goodbye until it moves to the left to cover hello. So with that in mind and working off the previous example, let's start getting that content onto the page. So now I have my content and I can start adding effects to the page. For our objects, we'll need one handle to control hello and goodbye and then a different handle to control the block, so we'll need some more handles. When duplicating effects, you can have multiple objects within the two handles performing those actions. You just simply name the group of objects the same name within the tooltip panel. So let's give hello and goodbye a new name that's more inclusive. I'll name them text. This same name should be used within their panels, so let's go and change that within here. And now we have our handles for the text boxes, and I'll name the rectangle block. If you'd like to use the same effect on a different object along the page, you can simply duplicate the handles and place them anywhere along the margins. The handles can also be copied and pasted within other pages. So with the scroll effects widget, duplicating handles is super easy, just option, click, and drag. Aligning multiple handles within the margins makes those effects happen simultaneously. Easily align multiple handles when duplicating by pressing shift, option, and click, and dragging those handles. The widget can be copied unlimited times on the page, so you can create all the effects you need for your content. I'm going to shift, option, click, and drag these handles, and rename them block. With the scroll effects widget, you're able to make objects perform effects in a number of different ways, but you can also control whether the object has one, two, or three different effects. And this is all done within the start option panel. So these handles are the most important part of the widget. They say when and where the content appears on the page. If we open up the start handle option panel, we see we have three sections. The first section controls the effects for before the start handle reaches the top of the browser. The second section controls the effects the objects will have between the two handles after the start handle has passed the top of the browser. So the closer the handles are together, the more brief the effect will be. For this last effect, these values will control the effects of the objects immediately after the finish handle has entered the browser from the bottom of the screen. If we wanted to create only one effect, you can place the start handle on the page for your objects and use the same values in the before the start handle and between two handles section. This way the object maintains that one effect for the entirety of the page. To create two effects, only place the start handle on the page for your objects and input your effects values that you would like to have before the start handle and between the two handles. Because the finish handle doesn't have to be on the page, the object will keep the properties of between the two handles. In order to have three effects, the distance between the start and finish handle should be greater than the browser height. For example, if you had a browser height of perhaps 1,000 pixels, but the distance between your start and finish handle was only 600 pixels, then by the time the start handle has passed the top of the browser, the finish handle will have already entered the page from the bottom. Within the Start Option panel, the object will take on the properties of before the start handle and after the finish handle enters. To have the three effects, we could just drag more space in between the handles. For these values within these sections, there's a good number of effects that you can achieve. If you're familiar with Adobe Muse's scroll effects, then you'll immediately recognize the value system for each situation. Each section uses the value of 1 as the normal scroll speed, so 0 will give your object no respective motion in that direction. 0.5 would move your object at half or 50% of normal scroll speed and two would make your object move at twice or 200% of normal scroll speed. Within these areas, you can use up to two decimal places. And for extremely subtle motion, I find it best to stick anywhere between 0 0.01 and 0 0.2. To make an object stay in place, use zero in both the horizontal and vertical speed areas. 
By using negative values, you can move your object to the left or down the page, while positive values move your objects to the right or up the page. To create a diagonal motion, use the same number in both the areas, but make one value a negative. So to move an object diagonally towards the upper left of the browser, the horizontal speed could use negative 0.5, while the vertical speed could be 0.5. Knowing that now, let's add the effects we need for our text in its option panel. I want the text to stay in place on the page for the entirety of the page, so we only need one handle, and within these two areas, I'm going to make it zero and zero. The opacity should stay at 100% the whole time, so no opacity effects. Now for our block, I'm going to open up the option panel and have it stay in place until its start handle passes the top of the browser. Then I want it to slide to the left and cover hello. For the before the start handle values, use 0 and 0, and between the two handles we could use a value like negative 1.3 for its horizontal speed and 0 for the vertical speed. After the finish handle, it needs to stay in place covering the hello, so these values would be 0, 0. It'll also stay at 100% opacity, so no need to change anything there. And I'll change the layering order to top because I want it to remain at the top of the items. The distance from the start handle to the top of the object is maintained while scrolling. So if I want an object to appear at the top of the browser, just align the tops of the handles and the objects. To keep the objects relatively aligned, they should keep their same distance between the start handle. So now to offset this effect, I'm going to select the block and its handles and drag it down the page a bit and change the block to white and let's preview. So you can see once I open up the page you get the hello and as soon as the start handle passes the top it starts to move the box. So that block is moving as I scroll up and down. And the hello and goodbye are staying in the same place because they have that zero and zero horizontal vertical speed. Well, that's the scroll effects widget. Be sure to check out the documentation for more information about scroll effects. This is Danielle with cookie.com and thanks for watching.